seems to be working. Fantastic. It's <laughs> a good start. It's a yeah. good start. Okay, Jeff, so uh, it's good to have you here. Thanks it's, for coming. It's great to be here. Awesome. Um, so uh, happy to be here. for those of us who don't know, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your career and where you, where you come from? Well, um, let's see. In uh, 1991, I was in my junior year of high school, and I decided to take a drama class. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to, uh, you know, most people that take drama in high school, uh, they have these, you know, dramatic ambitions. They want to get on stage and connect with people. Like, I was just watching a lot of kids in the hall and thought, like, it'd be fun to try to do that. <laughs> uh, so there was really only one other guy uh, in, the, in the program that was interested in any kind of comedy or anything like that. It was a guy named Glenn Rubenstein. And he was uh, writing, in addition to being in high school, and, all the other stuff. He was writing game reviews for the local paper in our small spur of town, and uh, he was just about to go to his first trade show. Which uh, back then, that was before E3 was uh, before E3 existed. Uh, the Consumer Electronics Show happened twice a year in Chicago and Vegas, and he was getting ready to go uh, to one of those. So we kind of became fast friends, and he's like, you know what, just come with me to this thing. We can figure out a way to fake credentials and get you into this trade show. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, absolutely. I will totally go hang out in Chicago for four days and play unreleased Super Nintendo and Genesis games. So I convinced my parents to let me do that and, uh, and got out there and uh, you know started trying to meet people and, and uh, met Andy McNamara, who now runs uh, Game Informer, um, mm. and kind of started slowly falling into that scene. It took about three years of going to that stuff and meeting people and talking and, and all that before it made sense, like, you know, this is maybe something I want to do. Uh, and then uh, Glenn and I went to go work for a print magazine that lasted a little under a year, three full issues. They ran off with the money. <laughs> it was like a really good 19 year old, uh, it was like a way to get a 19 year old super jaded about the, the way the world really works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then about a year after that, uh, the two of us ended up going to GameSpot, which was getting ready to launch a console site called Video GameSpot. Because this was before they realized that URL should be short. <laughs> this big, long thing. So uh, in 96, we launched uh, Video Game Spot, and I was there for 11 years, yeah. uh, reviewing games, kind of rising through the ranks there from like assistant editor to eventually editorial director. So speaking of being there for 11 years, yeah. Uh, so instrumental to the founding of Giant Bomb was the Kane and Lynch scandal of 2007. Yeah. Yeah, which yeah. was an exciting time for you. It was. That's, <laughs> yes, that's one way of putting it. <laughs> it, was, it was rumored for a long time that you were dismissed over a uh, not even negative review of Kane and Lynch, a fair review of Kane and Lynch. I think that was the actual term you used. Uh, yes, it, it got a six. So I think the, the word that went under six reviews at that time was fair. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, in 2012, when you came back to GameSpot, or came back to CBSI, mm -hmm. um, you confirmed that that was the reason you were dismissed. And what followed that dismissal was this like incredibly touching uh, round of support from your fellow GameSpot editors. So I was wondering if you would tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, you know that that all kind of happened. Uh, you know, there were there's a management team in there that uh, you know was very good at some things, and very you know very new to the notion of working with an editorial team and what that actually means in terms of editorial integrity and, and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, they had uh, me, the guy who'd been there for a decade and frowned a lot, uh, <laughs> being the guy that had just actually cost them some hundreds of thousands of dollars and people were like, oh, it doesn't work. the ads are getting pulled, we gotta do something about so, it. So they actually did pull ads because of that review? IDOS did, uh, yeah, IDOS threatened to pull ads. I don't know what actually happened uh, on that end of it, but you know, there were a lot of people that were very unhappy about that sort of thing. It's not the first time that's happened. That's, uh, you know, that's a relatively common thing over the course of uh, you know, a, a career in, in publishing, that sort of stuff, is you know, when, when they're unhappy with your coverage, they will, they'll push whatever button they can. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll come and threaten to, to take money away from, from the business and stuff like that. The, the key things that you have to have in place are a team that understands that that's par for the course and shrugs it off and says so like, well, you know, like we have to stand by this is this is what we do. If we if we can't stand by this, then what are we? And uh, what you had there was a, a case of people that were in those positions that were new to those positions and didn't necessarily understand that. Yeah. Um, so for me and for a lot of others, that was a really important moment in games because it kind of solidified their importance as a medium. Um, and in any medium, there's probably some amount of corruption in how reviews work. Maybe. But did yeah. it feel important when it happened? 
Uh, it felt crushing when it happened. Uh, I mean, it was important to me because, you know, it's like I had uh, bills due and you know, all this other stuff. And, you know, I, I've been, you know, on this path since, uh, since I was 16. So quite literally, I knew nothing else. <laughs> so it was like, <laughs> all right, okay, did this for this chunk of time. Now it's like, okay, now what? Um, and, you know, kind of talked about it with uh, some friends and there was this notion very early on of like, well, you know, like I could go become a producer to publisher or something and fill out spreadsheets or whatever it is the producers do. Um, so it had, it had to be really, it had to really touch you when Ryan, Vinny, Brad, and I believe it was Alex left uh, GameSpot in solidarity. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, uh, people were not very happy with the way that place was being run, and, and uh, you know, a, a chunk of people did get out of there. It was, it was very touching, and, um, you know, some of them, uh, the, the, the guys you listed off all uh, miraculously ended up working for me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the Giant Bomb. So, everyone, most of the people here know what Giant Bomb is, but for those who 